KTM RC125 2018 full service. Let's go. So in this series, like we said, we're going to be servicing this vehicle, uh, KTM RC125 2018, uh, pretty similar around a lot of the other models of the KTM, the 390, the everything else, different year models, similar process. What needs to happen guys, is we need to get this fuel tank off, we need to get the fairings off, so we can access the oil filter properly and make sure we're not spilling any oil into the, the bottom half of the fairing here. Um, so if we have a look here. What we're saying is the fuel cap needs to come off so we can get the plastic housing off we're going to get the fairings off so we can access the fuel filter we need to drain the oil and we need to get to the spark plugs the air filter everything underneath the fuel tank so we're going to start by stripping off the fuel the fuel cap cover the fuel tank cover and the fairings um, a lot of this is going to be coming off so we need to undo all these little bolts here it's it's an allen key so we'll get all these fairings off and we'll bring you guys back into it. That's where we start. We start by stripping the pot. Alright guys, right at the bottom there's two M4 bolts on the fairing. We'll get that removed. Guys, so when you're undoing the KTM fairing, another thing to be aware of is from the inside there are some push tabs that you need to release and hidden push tabs from the inside. Yeah, there you go, you can well. look here on Michael's side. One, two, three. Let's bring that camera. And that gets uh, get your fairing out. So if you have a look at the fairing guys, the bolts you need to get off on the left side. One, two, three. Four, five, five bolts from the outside, visible bolts that sits under the headlight. And then you're going to have your three push tabs. Mark's going to bring you in. Okay, this one I was missing one, but you've got one, two, three push tabs. So basically you press them in through the center from the inside and they release. Keep your parts tidy, keep them placed nicely and keep tabs of your bolts. The screen bolts will effectively always have a plastic washer just to protect the screen from cracking and so that it turns without catching. So that's done. Right guys, with your fairings off, your side fairings off, you've exposed the side of the, the KTM. You now need to get the petrol tank cover off. So we're going to pull these out. We're going to undo these bolts and our fuel cap is off. So we should be able to get this cover off to get access to the fuel tank and to dig deeper. Also two M4 bolts to be undone, besides the two M10s at the back, we get that off and we can get our cover off. One left, one right. There we go. You can see how it's starting to come loose. I just got one more to do this side. And our tank cover is out of here. Everything so far is just an Allen key. Between an M4 and an M5, that's all we're going to need for now. Or an and M10 uh, spanner or wrench for the back of the fuel tank cover. That's it. A lot of guys on the servicing don't remove this fairing, this bottom end fairing. And what that does, guys, is you get a when you remove your oil filter housing, you get a lot of oil that sits here and eventually can make its way to the rear wheel tire and you don't want that so don't be lazy about it remove the fairing it's a little bit of extra work but at least you know you're safe on the road let michael show us where he's at and what we're doing so there's currently a bolt underneath here that you need to remove two of those eh, two of those sorry there's two bolts here that you need to remove and then there's two on or one on either side so there's two bolts in the front and then this belly pan should just pop straight off awesome so mark's going to remove the belly pan now let's see how that gets done there we go, that's one of them that he was talking about. I hope you can see it there. There we go. Uh, there we are. One on the right side, one on the left side of the bike. 
Mark's busy with the one on the left side. Just use a little ratchet with an extension. We've already removed the two bottom ones. There we go. You can see it popping off nicely there. Good job, Mark. But like I say, guys, if you're going to do an oil service on these bikes, please don't be lazy and leave the fairing there. The oil that gathers there is a drip. You can see people have done that before. This is actually a perfect example. So this is water that's just been sitting here. But imagine all of that was oil and that was actually spraying straight back onto not the rear tire. Great, not great. You don't want that, especially if you're a learner driver on a 125. If you're servicing bikes for learners, guys, please just do the right thing. Remove that belly pad so you don't get that oil residue onto the back wheel. Right, guys, we're going to be removing a fuel tank on the KTM RC125. What we need for that is to obviously get the fairings and the fairing covers off like you've just seen us do. After that, obviously, you've got some M10 bolts that need to come out of the equation. We get those out of the play, out of the way. Let's just leave them, Luke. I don't need to remove the whole thing. Uh, yeah, you got that one, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. I was just in the wrong place there. I saw one there. I didn't see you take it up. It was too quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got your ECU wiring harness as well on the tank. So we're going to have to unplug it. So that it's... There we go. M10. Michael's already taken out the one on the right. So it's one left, one right. Then there's another... Two bolts underneath the battery that need to come out. So we need to get this battery removed and get underneath that battery. There's two bolts sitting just underneath there. Underneath the fuel tank, you're going to be looking for a fuel filter and some fuel cables. Uh, so that's the information that the computer is going to give you in terms of how much fuel is in your tank. Those cables and everything will need to be disconnected as, as well as the fuel line. So that's what we're going to be doing. Another cautionary that we're going to do is just cover the fuel tank so that nothing falls in there. You don't want to be moving a bolt and then it falls into your fuel tank. It's our battery stabilizer, if you want to call it that. That's the bottom of the battery housing. And these are two, two little bolts, Mark. One there, one there. I think here as well, hmm? That? Uh, that's going to be for this housing. We might get that off later if we need to get to the spark plug. We're not sure right now, but for now we're going to get the fuel tank out. So we're going to remove these two. I think maybe an M12 or M10. No, it's going to be it's bigger, bigger than an M10. Uh, I'll go with a 12 mark. Yeah, right, so two M12s underneath the tank. Mark will bring it in. I'm sure you can see it already anyway. One, two, that's part of the fuel tank. Ah. One left and one right. So we'll get those removed. There's a hidden, a mark will bring you into it. Um, unfortunately, this battery housing with the relays and everything needs to be loosened because the tank is sitting underneath that and there's a M4 Allen key there, so we'll get that removed and hopefully that does the trick. Something else you need to do on the KTM is it's, it's got a release clip on the ECU so, and a safety bracket that holds it. I thought we could actually just unclip it from the back, but I can see now it's got a it's got a press in clip that keeps it into its place, plus this safety bracket to make sure that it doesn't wiggle around and come loose. So a lot of things to strip, guys. Hopefully you learned something about this. We couldn't really find anything on a KTM RC125 full service. So I'm hoping this is one of the first out there. Here we go. We've got the ECU disconnected. We'll just keep our bolts in there for... track of our bolts a little bit easier this way sometimes just put them back where they belong again guys you are working with fuel it's an open fuel tank it has got quite a bit of fuel in there or a fair amount so we just got to be careful about that all right so what we're doing guys is you've got a cable a cable clip that attaches to a, a front a front fuel tank in full panel this clip unclips that 
in full panel so you can get access to the battery. So nice, clever move. Uh, Michael's now loosening, loosening these two bolts so that we can keep the clip on the fuel tank. Okay guys, so underneath the KTM RC125, we've got our fuel that supplies, after the fuel filter, supplies the, the engine. So we're going to unclip the fuel supply line. Then we've got our electrical tab connector, which is obviously giving all the information to us in terms of how much fuel in that is left. Uh, we'll get that unplugged. And our fuel tank should be home free. Okay, Mark, it's a double tab, so there's a connector here and there, so you've got a choice of doing that one or the one in the outside, do this one. Yeah, that one looks like an easy one to do. Guys, just be always, you know, if you've got a lot of fuel in this and you're tilting it to the side, just, just be aware of messing fuel in that. There we go, electrical tabs disconnected. That pops out, and then you're just going to do a push here. That's a push tab, so you're going to push both sides here, Mark, on the green, left and right. Gonna push and then pull out. It's got an O-ring set up. There we go. Should have an on return on there. Shouldn't drip too much petrol. Here we go. Fuel tank done. A lot of work to get there, but it is what it is. Okay, we should by now be able to. Got the air box. Got our air box happening here. Our air induction is actually coming from behind. So you're gonna have to take that off there, Mark. Get this opened up. So just get an M5 in there. Allen key, I'm almost certain our air filter is gonna be here with a star screwdriver, huh? Yeah, I think you're right. So let's open up with a star screwdriver. Let's have a look, guys. This is our first time servicing our RC125. So we're learning. We've got experience with tools and bikes, so we're willing to give it a try. Hopefully this helps you guys out there because there is not much at all out there in terms of that. I see our spark plug is sitting underneath this battery housing. We should be able to get to it without worrying too much about the battery housing. There's a lot of play on this. Otherwise, it is just a couple of cables and things to get out of the way. Okay, Michael's just undoing what we believe to be the air filter cover. Mm. Let's have a look here. Mark, it's going to slip out of there. It's got two rings on there. Yeah, so this actually should, that has to come off. Yeah. Right, guys, we're just taking off the stay bracket here. This is where the petrol tank connects to, so it's just an adapter plate. We could probably force our way out of here, but we don't want to be breaking anything. It's just two little M10 bolts, eh, Mark? Yeah. Okay, guys, there's our little air filter. If you've got a struggling KTM or a KTM that's got a little bit of a misfire, a lot of the times it comes down to this feeder pipe from your air induction. If it's been squeezed closed, you're choking the air and causing a problem. There's a ideal fuel air mix ratio of a 1 to 4. And if you're not getting enough air, you're not getting a good combustion and you're going to have a poor performing motorcycle. So, quick trick bit is to make sure that the induction pipe is not squashed. Very common on these bikes. If they get squashed or it gets clogged from what it sucks in as dirt, you're going to have a problem in your combustion. So, quick fix guys, make sure your induction is not crimped or blocked. Alright guys, air filter is out. It's a BW Signature air filter. There's the old one, I've seen worse, and there's our new one. Nothing like a clean air filter. Alright guys. Always just take the time to clean out your airbox, the exterior and the interior. We've already done a wipe down on the inside. There we go. Looking so sweet. We've got a new air filter mark. This Looking thing is going to be breathing nicely. When you ref refit these, obviously make sure you into the induction pipe properly. A little bit fiddly from here. If you struggle, then obviously this comes off. But hopefully we win. Let's win, Mark. Let's win. <laughs> It is troublesome though. Yeah. Can I hold it from the back? Line it up. No, no, cool. Pretty fiddly. There we go. No, it's not winning. Mm -hmm. Need to get that. We're gonna have to see you're gonna need to hold yeah, on that. I see, eh? yeah, flip man. 
and it's right in there. Okay, Mark, we're gonna have to take this back piece off. We need to do a good job about it. We've got a size five Allen key. So, how to remove a back seat on a KTM R2125? <laughs> Guys, you gotta remove everything on this bike to get it serviced. So, you know, make sure you've got a cleaning cloth because it's a good time to get in there and do a scrub down. Because this is a little bit ridiculous. Fairings off. Look, I suppose most super bikes, sport bikes, that's the case. You've got to get the fairings off. You've got to get the fuel tank off, whether it's a 1 to 5 or an R1 or an R1M. The procedure is similar in that 100 bolts later, you are done. So, here's our induction pipe. Like I was saying, we can maybe gain a bit of momentum on this one. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So, if I pull this a little bit forward, no, it hold on to just this. gives us more. Okay, there is also a location tab on the air filter box, so when it goes in, it, can, it, it needs to clip in there so that your two bolts can go back in there. Michael's, Michael and I have pushed the induction pipe forward because it takes the air from the back just so we can make sure that we've got it, got it back properly and we're in. Okay, so that's our induction pipe guys. Michael's now going to pull it back slowly so I can locate those two pins. Still in here? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're in. I think I'm in the... Am I in there? I need to get this squashed down. It's going at an angle there and down. Yeah, we're done. All right, so a little bit of an angle to get those two little <coughs> pins to clip in. Our induction pipe is properly on there. We're happy with that. Get our little two star screws back in there. These are two Phillips head or star screws that are on this air filter box. Leave the seat off because we're going to work on that wiring. Eh? Mm. Right, air filter KTM 125 done. We're going to see if we can get access to the spark plug, Mark. Let's show the guys what it looks like in here. Right, obviously, besides the dirt and the muck, it's our fuel line that we unclip, that's our electrical that we unclip for the fuel tank. And there's our ignition bungee cord or cable. A little bit of pressure, pop it off. It clips onto the spark plug. It's there we are. That's out. Move your hand there. Uh, there we go. So you need to unclip your spark plug cable to get to your spark plug down the down there. Right guys, we will be using a NGK a LKA R8A-9. I hope you got all of that. That's what they recommended. We're not sponsored by these guys yet. But we will be putting it in. We're going to be using a deep drive size 14mm multi-point, just take note of that, multi-point socket deep drive the standard sockets seem to be too big and that looks like a great fit mark we're just using a knuckle joint on the socket set hopefully that's going to give us the angle we we need uh, let's just see how deep we are okay guys so we've run into a bit of a problem mario will quickly explain to you what's happened all right guys we're trying to service the ktm rc125 and it's a size 14 socket that's needed however our deep drive socket that we're wanting to use is a little bit too thick to get past the tappet cover and get to the spark plug in the little well that the spark plug is situated it's so obviously you need a lot thinner tool so we're going to be grinding ours down and hopefully we can get the service done for you guys Right, so while Mario is busy grinding down that tool to try and get into the spark plug housing, I'm going to get started on the oil change and the oil filter 
So what we're going to be doing just over here to show you guys, there's the oil sub screw is down there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But we're going to be removing that screw over there. And then on this side, we've got the oil filter housing. So you have to remove these two bolts, obviously being very care careful not to lose that little O-ring. We're going to be pulling that out, draining the oil and putting in a new filter. And the bike's been warmed up already, so we are good to go. Okay, so to remove this bolt, you need a size 18, um, and it's just located underneath the engine case over here. And um, looking at this oil, there's not very much oil left in this engine. So something that you guys need to obviously double check before taking these things for a test ride, um, or starting it up and, uh, and revving the shit out of it, really. Okay, so to remove the oil filter, you're going to need a size 8 little socket, and it's just these two little bolts that you're going to be removing to get this little guy out so guys as you can see this is why you remove that fairing because you're always going to get a bit of oil leaking or oil spilling out of there so you don't want that on the belly pan because as we said that can go straight onto the rear tire and then you are in for a world of shit on the road especially like mario said if you're a learner rider um, and you just gas it around the corner you're on your ass so as you can see we've removed the the cap over here be very careful not to lose this little o-ring and inside here you'll see is the oil filter so we're going to be removing this here you might just need to get a little screwdriver to pull it out guys another thing you're always going to need is some menace rods blue roll if you want we can deliver it brown blue pink or red whatever you call it i know a lot of guys sell merch out there t-shirts that's not handy everyone's got a t-shirt please buy our blue roll can also be doubled up as bog roll. It's handy on the road, man. Good job. Okay, so Mario just showed me a little trick over here. Um, let me show you the new filter, actually. So in there, you can see it's got like a little rubber grommet. And that's actually what pushes in on the other side to make a, a good seal. And that was what was stopping me from pulling this, uh, the old oil filter out. So in order to get that out, we've got long nose pliers. So if I just push that in again. And then you just grab it on both ends and you just slowly pull it out and that will come out quite easily actually Yo. okay guys so you can see this is the old filter and this is the new filter nice and clean and that's going to go straight in there after we clean out some of that oil all right guys so michael's is making a good job of cleaning up all the leftover oil making sure we've got a good mating surface for the seal to go back in Let's so clean around the sides. Let's pop that oil filter back in. Once that filter's back in, guys, we're gonna proceed to remove the spark plug. Or should I start doing that now? Yeah. Let me start uh, trying to get that right. That was a big socket, wasn't it? Okay. So once again, we're gonna put in the new oil filter. Just make sure it goes in with that grommet side. Just don't put it in backwards. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. And you just slot that in. And make sure it pops in there you got a nice good seal and now we're going to install the little cap back on also worth just giving this a bit of a clean Make sure that the little bolts are lined up, little eyelets, and those should slot in quite easily there. Okay, so that's the oil filter change done. We put the little cap back on. The next thing we're going to do is put the sump screw back in, which is on the other side, so just the reverse of what we've done. We're then going to be topping up the oil over here, and there's a little screen on the bottom here where you can actually double check to see how much oil is going in, and that you're at the right level. Bring it in. So there, you'll be putting the oil in over here. Just unscrew this little bit. That oil goes in there. And then there's the little window over there. Glass. It's got two indicators on the guys. It's got a minimum and a high. You want to be somewhere in the middle or at the top. You don't want to be below that and you don't want to be above that. And to make sure that you're at the right level, the bike must be propped up and standing level, not on the stand like it is right now. See, at the moment we're on the stand. 
to make sure that your oil level is right, you're going to want to make sure your bike is standing level. Alright, so Mark's going to get to it on the oil service on the KTM. Okay, so we're putting the sump screw back in, so just the reverse procedure. Let's see where we are. So right at the bottom here. There we go. You can just hand tighten it over there. What size nuts that Mark? So this is a size 18. 18 socket, 18 nut, which is this guy over here. Tight and 90 degrees, eh? Yeah. There we go. Good, wrap it up, that's awesome. That's done. So, we've got our oil filter in, we've got our oil sum screw back in. We're going to now proceed to filling it up with oil. We will be using four stroke oil, motor oil, 10W40, four stroke motorcycle excellence. That's what we're about, excellence. Okay, so Mario's just going to be giving me a hand over here. Easiest thing to use is obviously one of these funnels. You can buy these at any Halfords or any uh, hardware shop, really. Or the interwebs. You know, the interwebs, yep, you can use that. Thank you, Mario. All right, so what Mark is going to be doing is going to top up the oil. We're not too sure on the spec of this in terms of the oil, but we've got to just remember that we need to fill up the oil housing again. Uh, we need to fill up so that we've got a mark on the screen that shows that it's good. Uh, so it's going to top it up, then we're going to level out the bike and just double check our levels. Right guys, so just to show you what we're talking about, if I drop the bike to that side, the oil level drops. I hope you can see that in the screen mark. Yeah, it's not super clear. You're going to bring it closer. Bring it right in mark. Alright, so that's our oil. If I bring the bike level, we we'll start seeing the oil in the screen. Boom! That's the bike level, and we're on the full mark. The angle of the camera is showing it a little bit higher than what it is, but it's actually on mark. Alright, obviously, after we started, it's going to eat up a little bit of that oil into the oil filter housing that Mark's cleaned up. But again, like we said, you don't want it over full, and that's why we try to make sure we're perfect on the mark and we look good. That's it. Oil, oil filter replacement RC125 KTM done. Alright, guys, so we've got our Menace 5000 KTM RC125 spark plug removal and installation tool. It's a specialist tool, let me add. It's made by Mario. If you want one, put it in the comments below. We'll get one made and send out to you at a price, obviously. Just look how thin we had to go with that. Just so we can get down the well, past the gasket, and in to find our spark plug. So we hope it's. Thick enough that it doesn't crack. Okay, let's crack that nut loose, or spark plug loose. Again, guys, you got to get uh, your fuel tank off, your fairings off, your battery out. It's a lot of fun. They're, they're trying to make sure you clean your bike properly because you got to get all that out of the way to get this done. But it's the same on any motorcycle, most likely. Well, a lot of the time, fuel tank off, seat off, everything off. I think we're loose there. I might have to get a magnet to fetch that. But like all spark plugs, when you lose, you might as well turn it a hundred times. Just to, yeah, sounds like it's wiggling there. Menace 5000 tool, guys. Did it work? It works. The only problem is getting the spark plug out of there now, which is fine. Okay guys, our spark plug is definitely loose with our Menace 5000. Order it now, before we sell out. One of a kind. <laughs> one of one made. Right guys, because that's not a proper spark plug tool, we're having to use a little telescopic magnet. Just to grab the tip of it and boom, oh, there's yeah. our spark plug. Hoorah! Oh, that spark plug looks... That's burnt, finished on that tip, yeah. eh? No more good sparking. She died. Okay, let's get a new one in there. Right, guys, always make sure you're installing a new spark plug. I'm let's gonna give show a you. Comparison. I'm yeah. gonna show you. You see that tip? Right in there, it's so sharp. That should look like that. Hope you see that. 
Yeah, that That's 6,300 kilometers of no spark plug change, guys. Please, these things need to be changed every 3,000 miles on these bikes because they work hard. Always make sure your gap is good. It must never be touching. Make sure you've got a good gap there. You can do a feeler gauge test and make sure you've got at least a mil and a half on there, but this looks good. Let's put and it in. let's drop it down the water well. Here we go. Job done. <laughs> Crank her up. <laughs> right, I'm gonna get our tool back in there and button that up. Right guys, on spark plugs, the general rule of thumb is to get it hand tight. When you're hand tight, you want 90 degrees after that and you should be tight enough. Remember the cylinder head you're going into. Okay, that's half of 90, that's 45. That's almost there. Now we can get our 90, that's hand tight. That's our 90 degrees. Remember, cylinders and engines are working on compression and if you don't tighten them enough, you lose compression through that spark plug, number one. Number two, if, if you over tighten it, you're gonna strip the threads on your aluminum cylinder head. So just be cautious. How tight? Tight, not too tight. That's our spark plug done. You now need to get our bogey cord back in there. That's just a question of, oh, 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 oh. Popping that on and making sure you get a good click and making sure that you seal up around. You don't want water or anything being able to get in there and that's why they've got like a little dust cover on them. Okay guys, we're going to put the fuel tank back in my right. I was getting ahead of myself, I wanted to do a test, but that's fine. We'll get our fuel tank back in. Okay, we've got our little overflow pop to go in. So three things to remove guys. We found it now, it's hiding away. It was obviously disconnected from me pulling it up, but there is an overflow pop for the fuel. So when removing the fuel tank, we said there's a fuel line, there's the electrical line, but there is the overflow. So three things to remove, three things to put back, Mark. Okay, so Mark's going to be doing all the plugging in. Uh, I hope you guys can see that. I'm just holding it only because we've got quite a bit of fuel in here. Alright, that's our fuel supply to the engine plugged in. Let me get that sort of that side in. Is it over or under? I here? think under, under there. Yeah. yeah. Sound good. Mm -hmm. Right, the electrical lines plugged in, and then we've just got the overflow cable to get connected. Happy days. Happy days, that's all plugged in. Let's clip the top in. There's a washer popping out, Mark. Where does that it under? In the in tank. There. Yeah. Are you good with it? Can't see. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I'll lift this up properly, both sides. Otherwise, I've got a problem with that. So. But okay, that one's good to go. That one's good, the other one's doing the same. Is it in? Can't see my son. Okay, and make sure you secure. This needs to face down, Mark. It's just a bit rubber. Anti-friction something. Okay, down there. Okay, let's get our size, two size 12s in there. Okay, that's the battery housing back in its place. Remember, Allen key back in to hold that down. Okay, Allen key's back in. Two, put our two nuts back in for the battery housing. Right, once that's back in, we can get our battery back in. Give it a test type before we get all the fairings back on. Okay, that's our battery back in guys. A bit of niggling around. It's, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't see this, but this is a stolen recovered vehicle. That sound you're hearing is exactly what you need to hear, especially if you've unplugged and replugged in everything. That's your fuel pump priming your injectors. Injector. You can do that twice.
Sounds good. Right guys, awesome. You saw Mark do the oil oil filter replacement on this KTM RC125. Very similar across a lot of motorcycle series. We've also done a full uh, spark plug change and air filter change on the bike. We've also done another episode in series on the rear indicators that we've replaced. We've done a series on the headlight replacements. We're doing a full series on the KTM RC125. Only because there's not much out there for you guys and we're just trying to help you. We're learning as we're going because like we said there's not much out there. So like, share, subscribe. We're putting this bike back together now. Oil's done. Oil's checked. Uh, spark plug's done. Oil filter's checked. We've now got to get this thing together. So we're going to start with the headlights indicators to make sure that everything we've got is working electrically. And then we're going to start assembling the fairings. For the first time on Menace Rides, KTM RC125, complete teardown, complete service, daylight replacement, and indicator replacement on the other videos. So if you like what we've done here and you'd like to know how to change your rear indicators, Mark and I have done an awesome video on the indicator replacements and the daylight replacements. The only thing left now is to take it for an out ride. Unfortunately, it's taken us a little bit longer than we expected. So we will have to wait for another day but for you guys that video will be straight after this one or at the end of this one so for you guys it's like a second and for us it's going to be a day or two hey mark that's it all right mark another awesome build we're just going to put our fuel cap back in and that's the fairing build that's everything done this is a sweet ride guys i don't know if you saw we had to repair some wires this was a hot wired bike but it works on the switch now We've got a... Got an awesome riding bike, RC125. It's going to be for sale within the next week. So if you guys are looking out for it and this, and, and this video has just been released, it's most likely still available. So like, share, subscribe and comment, guys. We're going to do a Benelli 1 to 5 oil service. Uh, if you're interested in that, a lot of other builds coming up and other videos out there on other bikes we've done already so keep watching keep liking and subscribing see you on the next one menace rides